Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video, we learn how to apply Bernoulli's theorem for the cases where the fluid in picture is rotated in a vessel or a tube as in this case. Let's read the problem statement first and then we'll deal with the solution. So we have a horizontally oriented tube AB which is rotating with a constant angular velocity omega about a stationary vertical axis o o dash passing through the end A of the tube. The tube is filled with an ideal fluid. The end A of the tube is open Okay, so this end is open to the atmosphere and closed end B has a very small orifice. So we have an orifice at this end B, which is very small compared to the area of cross section of the tube. So we have to find the velocity of the fluid relative to the tube as a function of the column height H. Okay, so in short, length of fluid in the container is H. We have to basically find the efflux velocity that is relative to the tube. Okay, so relative to ground frame, it will have a component of omega L into the plane or out of the plane depending upon the omega, but we have to ignore that. We don't care about that. What they are asked us to find is VR. Okay guys, so in my yesterday's video of uh, discussing the J2022 problem, I, dis I discussed how to apply Bernoulli's theorem in the case of a compressible flow. We'll use a similar method in this particular case as well. Okay guys, so this is basically how the situation is looking like. Now let's consider a fluid element. So let's go a distance of X from the axis of rotation and pick a small element of width. So this is the fluid element that we are talking about. So, and let's try to, uh, you know, determine the forces on that. So this is the zoomed version of the fluid element. And let's say the pressure uh, towards the left of the element is P at a distance of X from the axis, the pressure is P and at a distance of X plus DX, let's assume the pressure is P plus DP. Okay. And what are the other forces? So, okay guys. So now let's observe everything in the rotating frame of reference. Okay guys. So now if we are observing the fluid element from the rotating frame, then we have to apply a centrifugal force on this element, right? And the magnitude of the centrifugal force will be dm which is the mass of this fluid element times omega squared x and let's say that relative to this tube the fluid element over here is moving along the tube with an acceleration of a so we can say the acceleration of the fluid element is a towards a right so these are the only forces uh, that are acting along the fluid element right uh, we can we can neglect the forces on the vertical plane because they're not doing any useful work right okay so now what we're going to do is write sigma f equals ma along the x direction and also let's consider the cross-sectional area as dA. So PDA minus P plus DP times dA plus, so I can write the mass of the fluid element as the density of the fluid times the volume and the volume is going to be dA times dx times omega squared x. This is the net force and this would be equal to the mass times the acceleration. So here we have to discuss an important detail guys. This acceleration A over here is going to be the relative acceleration from the rotating frame. Okay, what I'm trying to say is if you observe the fluid, this fluid element sitting in the rotational frame, then A is the acceleration that you observe in this particular case. Okay, so I can also write A as V dV by dx. Now V is simply the relative velocity with which the fluid element moves along the tube. We are not including the omega x term guys. Keep that in mind. Okay guys and after cancelling out the dA terms and rearranging everything a bit what we'll end up with is this particular equation. Okay so now if we integrate this expression between any two points on the streamline uh, 1 and 2 so this is the final expression that we'll end up with. So if you want a generalized version it will look something like this. An extra term of minus half rho omega square r square. If you add that to the Bernoulli's theorem then you can apply Bernoulli's theorem for a rotating fluid, okay? Now let's apply it in our given problem. Let's call this point over here as one and this point over here as two. So we'll apply Bernoulli's theorem between point one and two. So at point one, the pressure is P naught as it is exposed to the atmosphere. Okay, so uh, guys, keep this in mind that the velocity in the half rho v square term is with respect to the rotating frame. So it won't be wrong if you write this as VR as well. Okay, so we are not talking about the absolute velocity that is square root of vr square plus omega r square. We are just talking about the relative velocity. Um, and this has to do with the way we derived the equation. Okay, so now we can apply it. So what is the velocity of the fluid at point one relative to the tube? It will be negligible, right? Because as we, by continuity equation, this uh, area of cross section is negligible compared to our area of cross section at one. Then we can say that the velocity of the fluid relative to the tube at one is negligible. The half rho v square term would simply be zero at end one. Okay. And then we have a minus half r1 square. So the distance of point one from the axis is going to be L minus h. Okay. So, and the, uh, gravity is not doing any work guys, because they're both at the same horizontal level, right? Like, uh, and if the, if the rod were tilted at some angle theta, then you have to also consider the work done by gravity and this would be equal to the pressure at n2 is going to be p0 as well because it's exposed to the atmosphere we'll consider the relative velocity with which the fluid exits the tube as v plus half rho v square minus half rho omega square l squared 
and after solving you'll obtain the velocity as this particular value so that was it for this problem guys if you have any doubts you can comment down below always and do like and subscribe if you enjoy the video and thanks for watching